<clears throat> volume up, volume up, all attention forward. Y'all know what it is. But you kind of you kind of know what it is. You got a, a pretty good idea what it is. I'm gonna tell you what the topic is today. But I hope everybody's had a great <clears throat> Tuesday, May the 12th, 2000 and 2020. Almost said 2013. I was looking at something from 2013 today. But I hope everybody's doing well. If you're not. You're going to be doing well by the time this is over because I'm going to give you something that's going to make you better. I promise this is going to make you better. I promise this is going to help you take your game to, the, to, its, to its next level, whatever that game happens to be. If y'all coming in right now, tell me your name and location in the comment section, and we're going to get started in a minute. As you come in, tell me your name and location in the comment section. We're going to get started in a minute. My name is Dre All Day. For those of you who don't know me, I'm going to introduce myself formally in a moment, but I'm going to give people a minute to come in. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit that share button. Share this with somebody on your on your uh, your timeline, on your friend list on Facebook. Because there's somebody else out there besides you who needs to get this game that I'm about to drop today. And I'm about to drop a lot of game. We only got 60 minutes at the most because then Instagram will kick me off and I'm not going to go off and start over again. We get, whatever we get in in 60 minutes, we're getting it in. For those of you who don't know it, that's what we do here every day on this live. If you didn't know, every day I go live 5.15 p.m. Eastern. If you didn't know, now you know I just told you. Tell me your name and location in the comment section. We're getting started in a minute. It's already 5.21 p.m. So we're getting started in a moment, everybody. I got some new stuff that I'm cooking up for uh, a special segment of my audience very soon. I've been working on it all day. Yesterday, today, tomorrow It's coming soon And when I tell you something's coming soon I really mean it is coming soon It's guaranteed coming As long as I'm alive, it's happening And it's coming soon, trust me So as y'all coming in Tell me your name and location in the comment section Facebook, hit that share button Tell me your name and location in the comment section We're getting started in 45 seconds I'm going to give everybody a moment Just to get yourself ready uh, turn, your, turn, your, turn the volume on your phone up Turn the notifications off uh, you can put it on sleep mode so that nobody can call you or text you. Don't put it on airplane because then you're going to lose your internet connection. But put it on sleep mode so nobody can call you or text you or interrupt what I'm getting here today. Because once I say it and I've said it, if you missed it, then you missed it. And you don't want to miss too many things. You want to lose out on what I'm sharing here today because losing is for losers, if you didn't know. Curtis checking in from Indiana. Shout out to Curtis. As y'all coming in, y'all can tell me name and location. We're getting started in 15 seconds. I'm going to introduce myself right now. We're getting into the material. My name. For those who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. If you don't know my background, let me tell you. I'm a former nine-year professional athlete, played nine years overseas. I'm an author. I've written 26 books. Yes, that's not an exaggeration. 26 books that you can find online right now. You can buy every one of them. 26 books published. I've done four TED Talks. You can find those on YouTube. I've created over 15,000 pieces of content. You can find them at Google. Over 7,000 YouTube videos, 7,000 articles, 1,500 podcast episodes that I call master classes y'all call them podcasts but my my audio show is not the normal podcast that's why it's behind the wall at work on your game university.com I can't even just give it out to everybody randomly because y'all wouldn't understand y'all wouldn't appreciate the value of it if I just put it out there with everybody else's I can't have my stuff mixing in with the trash that people put out for free every single day so you gotta go to work on your game university to get it again that's over 1500 episodes of that podcast and what do I do I already told you about some of the stuff that I do. I'm a content creator. I'm a keynote speaker, a coach, consultant, uh, trainer, product creator. I already told you about the content stuff. And all of this is under this whole thing that I do. I created this whole framework slash philosophy slash brand in this company that is called Work On Your Game that I started over 10 years ago. It's all about taking the mindset necessary to be successful in professional sports. Mine happen to be basketball, yours might be boxing, and you might not even play sports. But the mindset that you need to be in the top 1% of your profession, which all professional athletes are, that mindset and how you can use that mentality in your business, how you can use it in your life, and how you can use it just in your everyday, anything that you got going on in life. You could, you could be working at a job as the maintenance man. You can apply to work on your game philosophy. You could be a basketball player. You could be a, a author. You could be an Instagram model. And you could apply the work on your game mentality. That's what I teach here every day. That's why I do these lives so that y'all know that the stuff that I talk about is real. This is not curated. This is not... Uh, me planning it out and taking all day to write a caption. This is not me editing anything. This is me coming straight to you. This is actually happening live right now, 5.24 p.m. I'll show you the time right there on my Apple Watch so y'all know this is actually happening. This is not This is not synthetic. Uh, make sure Instagram can see that. It's upside down Instagram, so y'all see that. This is actually happening live right now. So what we're talking about here today is actually a question that I was asked in my DM 
a DM was sent to me by, I can't remember the guy's name who sent me the DM, but his question was, can you do a live on streams of income and how you can create streams of income in life? And I said, yes, I'm actually going to do it today because people had asked me earlier, well, Dre, where do you get these topics that you talk about on the lives? I think them up. I just decide, all right, you know what I'm going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about this. And then I go talk about that topic. And that's what I'm going to do here today. Somebody sent me a DM at like 10 o'clock this morning, or at least I read it at 10 o'clock this morning. And I wrote him back and said, yeah, I'm going to talk about that today. So that's what I'm about to do right now. Let me see if I can find that DM so I can tell you who that was. That DM came from Xavier. Xavier said, can you do a live about all your about streams of income and how you build it. That was at 11 o'clock this morning. Here we are, 5 o'clock this afternoon, and I'm talking about it. Just to show you, again, y'all need to understand that the stuff that I talk about doing, I actually do. I'm not talking about what my man did or my cousin or a book that I read. I'm talking about what I do every single day. So y'all know that this is for That's why I do it live. So you know this is not planned out. This is not recorded. This is not edited. Straight roll. Now, let's get into it. Now, when it comes to creating streams of income for people who don't even know what that means that means making money generating revenue money that goes into your pocket into your account in more than one way a stream of income if you have a job that's a stream of income if you have a, a business on the side that's another stream of income if you got some investments over here that's another stream of income so a stream of income is just different ways of making money hopefully you can do so consistently so you want to try to have multiple streams of income simply because not so you can brag about it and tell other people about it you want to have multiple streams of income just in case something happens to one of them that is out of your control then you have other ways of making money for example if you are an athlete and you're making money playing sports as a professional but you get injured now nobody's paying you anymore if you don't have a guaranteed contract well how are you going to eat while you can't play sports anymore or maybe you can't play for a year or two how are you going to make money if you have another stream of income that you thought of that while you were still playing, now you have another way of generating income. If you had a job, let's say you ran a restaurant, a very successful restaurant in your town right now, but then the COVID-19 situation happened and your city demanded that you shut down your restaurant and nobody wants to come in anyway because everybody's afraid of getting the, the COVID-19 virus. Now you can't run your restaurant, even though you're great at running restaurants. It's not your fault that the COVID-19 virus start going around. Now you can't run your business anymore. Do you have another way of putting money in your pocket just to, at least so you could be all right until you can get back to doing your main thing, which is running your business. So having multiple streams of income is not about uh, bragging about it. It's not about uh, telling other people that you got more than they have. It's about you putting yourself in a position where you have different ways of succeeding financially even if one of your ways just stops working again, it may not even be your fault. And maybe it is your fault. Maybe you just got worse at basketball and now nobody wants to sign you anymore, even though they wanted to sign you last year. And now you can't make that money. Maybe your restaurant just start being terrible. Maybe you sold, maybe you made, you know, your bacon cheeseburger was just special and everybody in your neighborhood decided to go vegan. It ain't your fault. But now you can't sell your bacon cheeseburger anymore. So what are you going to do to continue to make money? You just want to have different ways of Different ways of succeeding. So these are different hustles is the way that I'm explaining. So I like to use that phrase hustling because people need to understand that hustling doesn't just mean, you know, just working hard and you know, sweating through your clothes and all of that. And it doesn't necessarily mean doing something illegal in the streets. Hustling means always looking for different angles and different ways to succeed. So that if one of your main ways of succeeding stops working, you got another way to succeed. So what we're talking about here today is hustling, but we're going to talk specifically on the, the financial aspect. And what I'm going to explain to you here today, I want to make sure I'm putting this disclaimer out here. This is not the only way to create multiple streams of income. All right. So any way that you know of to generate revenue, all right, you can do it to create multiple streams of income. What I'm going to share with you here today is one specific framework for creating multiple streams of income that I'm going to be speaking from my perspective. Now, again, I already told you who I am and what I do and my background. So you have a very, you have an understanding of what my perspective is. I came from playing sports. I was on the internet. I started creating content from that content. I started to build an audience and through that content and audience, I started creating products and services and start selling them online. I'm an online marketer or online entrepreneur, whatever phrase you want to use. That's what I do. Okay, so that that's the perspective that I'm going to be coming from. So if 
you are thinking of going into these areas that I'm in in any way, shape or form, you can utilize what I'm going to share here today. And even if you think of doing something different, you can still take some of the principles that I'm going to share here today and you can apply them to what I do. Because what I'm going to share with you here today is a framework, meaning you could take this framework. You don't have to use it the same way that I used it, but you can apply it any way that you want to and it will apply to what you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? Just like when I wrote this book, Work On Your Game, it came from the perspective of me being a professional athlete, but you don't have to be a pro athlete to read this book and learn from it because what I share with you in this book is my framework for how I took my mentality and used it for sports and how you can apply it in your business. You could apply it at you working at a tall building with the, all the glass and there's an office and you wear a suit every day, you don't play ball, you can still use this framework because the framework applies across any platform. I just happen to have played sports. So what I'm going to share with you here today is the exact same thing. So thank you for the comments, people who have been leaving the comments. I will answer, for those of you who don't know, I answer all questions and all comments at the end of the live. So I'm going to go through all these points. I got five points today. I'm going to explain all five. Then I'll recap all five. I'm going to tell you why I got these two books sitting here in front of me and how you can get them for free. And then I'm going to take all questions. And we ain't got a lot of time, so let's get into it. All right, so creating streams of income. I'm going to explain how you can do this. Number one, first thing you have to do if you want to create a stream of income, you want to create even one stream, you must create wealth. Now, some of you may be confused with me saying that, and I'm going to explain it. A lot of people don't know what wealth is. A lot of people like to throw around these words like rich and wealthy and wealth and don't even know what the words mean. You ask them what does it mean, they can't even define it. Or they'll just throw out some number as if that means rich or wealthy. That's incorrect. Wealth means something people want. That's what wealth means. A wealthy person is a person who has a whole lot of something that other people want. That's the definition of wealth. So next time somebody asks you what does it mean to be wealthy, now you know. When you have something people want, you're wealthy. If you have knowledge and other people want that knowledge, you have wealth. Now, if you want to turn that wealth into money, you have to figure out how to take the next step, which I'll tell you about in a moment. That'll be point number two. We're going to get to that and I'll explain it. But you must create wealth or you must discover where your wealth is. You have to find your wealth. You might hear people saying something like that. Find your wealth. I remember Nas back in the day, like in the 90s, he had a song called Find Your Wealth. Find, and the reason why some people may say find your wealth is because every single one of you has something of value to offer the world. You have something that you can offer. You might not know what it is. You may be ignoring it. You may have wasted it up to this point in your life. You may not know what to do with it. Maybe you know what it is, but you don't know how to use it. But everybody has wealth. Everybody in this, on this earth has something, some gift that was bestowed upon you that once you figure out how to harness it and use it and share it with other people, you can generate other things that you want from it. Now, money is a form of wealth. But money is not all of wealth. Money is under the, wealth is up here. Money is just one of the, the main money is one of the children of wealth. OK, so wealth had kids. Money is one of them. Knowledge is wealth. Energy is wealth. Having a way to solve somebody's problem is wealth. If you sell cars and there's people out there who need a car, that's wealth. You go to, you drive past a car dealership. You see people going in there looking at the cars. All right. That dealership has wealth. If you run a restaurant and there are people in the neighborhood who want something to eat, you have wealth. If you own a gas station and people need gas for their car, that is wealth. Okay, so anything that people want is wealth. I mean, you can create wealth out of nowhere. Remember before, some of y'all old enough to remember, there was a time we didn't have these devices. Remember when we didn't have these? Steve Jobs went and created this, and all of a sudden, everybody needed one. Steve Jobs created wealth out of nowhere. All right, this is, nobody had made anything like this before he created it. He created wealth out of nothing. He just took an idea out of his head. His intellectual property turned it into a physical, tangible item that everybody has. Now, everybody in the world needs one. And when this one gets old, you're going to buy another one. That is creating wealth on a, a boss level. All right, that's creating wealth like super duper level. And you don't have to be at Steve Jobs level. You might not be that smart. I don't know if any of us is. Maybe you are. But you can create wealth in many different levels in many different places. There's no limit to how much wealth can be created on this planet. All right, we live in a world of abundance. Just because one person becomes really wealthy and they make a whole lot of money off their wealth, that doesn't mean you can't make the same amount or even double or ten times what they made as long as you're willing to create that wealth. Now, creating wealth and then doing something with that wealth takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes knowledge. It takes, you got to hustle. All right, this is not, this is going to happen. It's not just going to fall in your lap. But if you have something that other people want, you have wealth. For example, and some of you might think, well, Dre, damn, I'm not Steve Jobs. You know, I don't have you know, a podcast. How can I create wealth? Understand something. When I was, I'll give you an example. When I was a senior in high school, I had a job my senior year. I was playing on a ball team, but I still had a job. 
I worked at McDonald's at the mall. And I'm from Philadelphia, PA. So I worked at this mall called Plymouth Meeting Mall outside of Philadelphia. I worked at McDonald's. I had wealth. Now, how, now you might be wondering, Dre, how the hell do you have wealth working at McDonald's? I was making $5.15 an hour. That was the minimum wage back then. All right, this is like 1999. I was making $5.15 an hour. How was that wealth? It's wealth because the managers at McDonald's, they had this system. They had the McDonald's system and all that. And they had these customers who were going to come because it's McDonald's. But what do they need? They need some employees to come there and work the register, make the burgers, uh, put the fries down and make sure the fries are cooked, put the fries in a little bag, make the little McFlurries, you know, get people's extra value meals, take the orders, take the money, give them their chains. They need people to do that. So me, being the person who was willing to work, I had wealth and my wealth was worth $5.15 an hour. Why was it worth that? Because that's what I accepted. All right, so you have wealth even if you, got, you have a minimum wage job. You ever... I don't know what they do it wherever y'all live, but you ever drive on the road and you see that dude standing on the side of the road and they got the little sign and they flipping the sign around and they doing dances with the sign trying to get you to go into the little store. All right, that's wealth because they're getting paid something. I remember I was walking in Miami and I seen the dude with the sign. I was like, man, how much they pay you to be twirling that sound around? I forget what he said, <laughs> but he said like $10 a day or something. I can't even remember what he said, but it wasn't a lot of money, but it was something. He was trading his effort and his time for money. That is wealth. Okay. Now you can do it on a big level. Steve Jobs, you could do it like the dude twirling around a pizza sign, and you could do it something in between. But as long as you have something that other people want, you have wealth. If you want to create streams of income in your life, you must create or identify wealth. Okay, until you do that, you cannot create any income at all. So, anybody listening to me, if you've ever been paid by another person honestly for something, that means you had wealth. You just need to start thinking like this and identify what was my wealth there. All right, if you worked at TJ Maxx, your wealth was your time and your effort. If you worked at, I don't know, wherever, anywhere, anywhere you ever worked, if you cut somebody's grass, the fact that you had a lawnmower or that you had the time and effort to cut the grass and the old lady didn't want to do it herself, that was wealth. All right, if you can write a book, you got some knowledge in your head, you write a book and you sell it to somebody and they give you $15 for the book, you give them the book, you create it well. That's what we call that intellectual property. All right. Somebody said they work at Subway. Perfect. They pay you by the hour, right? And you do the work. You do your job. As long as you do your job, they keep paying you. You have wealth. And they have wealth too because people come in there and they buy the sandwiches. So this is how wealth is created. As long as wealth is being created, we'll always have an economy. Point number two. The topic here today, for those who came in the middle of this, we're talking about creating streams of income. So the first thing is you got to identify or create wealth. Number two. You got to educate yourself and you must get very good at creating exchange. Some people may call this selling, creating exchange. What does this mean? This means me coming to you and saying, hey, I created this wealth. I took this knowledge out of my head and this experience I went through and I put it in a 250 page book. I'll sell it to you for 25 hours. Maybe some people will buy it just off of that. Maybe some people will buy it because they know who I am and they've been listening to me for years. Maybe if you never heard of me, you're like, all right, that's cool, and I ain't buying your book. I ain't never even heard of you, dude. Now, I'm going to give you some value. I'm going to give you more value. I'll give you more value. You ain't even got to buy it today. You could buy it in three months. Just listen to me every day. Or I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the book and why you want it and what it's going to do for you. And I'll find out about you, and i give you an even better sales pitch, and eventually, I'm going to get you to buy the book. That is exchange. Exchange only happens when I give you something and you give me something. That's an exchange. Again, some people call this sales. It's the same thing. But until you create an exchange, you cannot create streams of income. All right? Because not income to somebody, you got to have something coming in. All right? How do you get money from other people without stealing it from them? Is you have to give them something that they're willing to exchange their money for. So if you started, if you got a restaurant and you charge $10 a plate for some food and people are like, oh, that looks good. All right, I'll order a plate. You give them the plate of food. They give you $10. That is an exchange. Now, you cannot create a stream of income until you can make the exchange. So even if you have something that's great, that's really valuable, but, and you're putting it out there, but you aren't getting an exchange, then that is not, that's not a stream of income. It doesn't mean it's bad because, listen, right, what am I doing right now? I'm giving you a live. You didn't have to pay to listen to this. So I'm putting it out here for free, but there's a strategy to this. There's a whole process to this. There's a reason why I'm doing it, and I just explained it to you. I'm going to give you value so that you buy into me. You're like, all right, I'm going to listen to this dude a little bit more, see what else he's talking about. And maybe a year from now, you might finally buy something. We, you know, we might finally create an exchange. Maybe you might buy something today. It depends on where you're at and depends on what I said. But you have to understand that until an exchange is happening, that is not a stream of income. So Instagram is not a stream of income for anybody on Instagram except Mark Zuckerberg because he's the one making the money. 
All right, y'all don't know who that is. That's the dude who owns Facebook. Facebook owns Instagram. For everybody else, all right, we are his customers. All right, we're paying with our attention, even if we're not paying with our money. So in exchange, if you work at a job, you work at Subway, like the person said right there, all right, you give your time. And that's something, that's a resource. Your time is a resource because that manager needs people to work or that owner needs people to work. He gives you your check every two weeks or your direct deposit and boom, or he gives you your cash under the table. I know some people do that. Boom, now you got paid, done. That's an exchange. You sell socks. I remember I was in high school, this dude used to say, he used to come with a duffel bag full of socks, like every two weeks. Like socks with like uh, cartoon characters on them or something. People used to buy these socks for like five, ten dollars a pop. That is an exchange. They would pay him for the socks, he would give them a pair of socks, everybody was happy. That is an exchange. I remember as a dude in my high school used to make, he used to sell mixtapes. And this is back in the, the 90s before we had streaming, y'all. So those of y'all who don't remember this, this is when you had, used to have to buy the mixtapes on a cassette tape or a CD. He used to come with the cassette tapes. He would go copy them and he would make exchanges. Now, this was technically illegal, but he was small time. Ain't like he was making millions of dollars off this stuff. But we would buy these tapes off him. That was an exchange. So you have to learn how to create exchanges. If you do not know how to create exchanges, if you do not know how to sell, here's what you need to do. You need to go connect with somebody who does and let them sell on your behalf and then you give them a cut of what you make but you need to get with or you need to become somebody who knows how to create exchange you cannot generate revenue if you cannot make exchanges and if you're not generating revenue then it's impossible to have streams of income now how are you going to have a stream of revenue if you can't make an exchange so you must learn how to make exchanges so go buy some books on sales buy some books on persuasion buy some books on building rapport because usually when you Create an exchange, you're getting an exchange from a human being, right? There's somewhere there's a human being in that process. You gotta learn how to talk to people. You gotta learn how to listen to people. You have to learn how to just work on your communication skills. I got a, a, leader, a three book bundle called the Leadership Bundle. It's all about communication, building rapport, and making those exchanges with other human beings, making people feel like they're heard, like they're being seen. All of that is important when it comes to selling. So if you do not know how to sell, and I got a book called The Seller's Mindset. How could I forget? And when you write that many books, sometimes you forget. But I got a book called The Seller's Mindset that is all about putting yourself in the framework of creating exchanges in your life and making sure you get what you, what you want. Because sales is just persuasion, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know, sales just means getting your way, getting what you want in life. Again, that doesn't mean you're, make, you're doing somebody else wrong. It just means you're getting what you want. And the best way to get what you want, to paraphrase the late, great Zig Ziglar, is to give everybody else everything they want. Give people what they want, they'll give you what you want. We call that an exchange, and this is how money gets made. Point number three, those who came in the middle, we're talking here today, creating streams of income. So now I just told you how to create one stream, right? Find wealth or identify wealth or create wealth and then make an exchange. That's one stream. If you can do that, all right, boom, you're selling socks, you got your money. You work at Subway, you got your money. You write books and you sell them, you got your money. So that's one stream of income. But how do you create another stream and another stream and another stream? That's the third point. Point number three is you must create symbiotic offerings. For those of you who don't know what this word symbiotic means, let me give you the definition. It means involving interaction between two different organisms living in close physical association. Now let me dumb that definition down and put it to you in plain English. It means you need to create other offers that complement your main offer so that you can do both or all three or all ten together, but they all work together. They all work with each other. They integrate. For example, let me give you an example of symbiotic relationships. Now, how many people here got a smartphone? How many people got an iPhone who listen to this right now? Probably 90% of people who ever watch this video own an iPhone. If you ain't got an iPhone, you got an Android. All right, either one, doesn't matter. So now with this smartphone, what's the next thing that you do once you have a smartphone? Now it comes with some, some accessories, right? It comes with the little the, uh, cord, the corded air, earbuds, and it comes with, what else it comes with? It comes with the power charger. Right now, you might want a wireless charger. Now, Apple's going to sell you a wireless charger because some people are going to want that, right? Because they want the convenience to just lay the phone down and it charges. What difference does it make? I don't know. All right, so what else do you need? Some people might want the Apple Watch. I got the Apple Watch on right now. Do I need an Apple Watch? No, but do I want an Apple Watch? Yes. So I went and bought the Apple Watch. This is a symbiotic offering. What about AirPods? You don't need, do you need to have earbuds that don't have a cord? Does it really matter? Not really, because for years we didn't have these, but as soon as they came out, everybody needed them. Now they'll sell these to you for $150. Now this is a symbiotic offering. Uh, do you need an iPad? Not really. We didn't have iPads for many years. Everybody was living fine. Now all of a sudden the iPad came out, everybody needs an iPad. 
Now they're going to sell you the iPad. What else does Apple make? Whatever the next product is, they're always going to sell you the next thing that connects to the thing that you already have. Do you see that? Those are all symbiotic offerings. So the iPhone was the first thing. All right, everybody kind of sort of needs a phone these days. We can say everybody needs a phone. We can, that's safe to say. Now, do you need a, a laptop? Maybe, maybe not. You could pretty much do, damn near do everything on the phone. But they'll sell me this laptop. I paid $1,000 for this laptop. Symbiotic offering. Why? Because everything on the phone connects to everything on the laptop. Then I've got the watch. Then I got the AirPods. And I don't even know what other Apple products I got. And then my girl got all the same stuff. So we got all this Apple stuff. And all we needed was the phone. Everything else is extra. Oh, yeah, the Bluetooth speaker. Remember, remember baby was looking at the Bluetooth speaker in the Apple store? So they got the Bluetooth speaker, right? And it sounds great. How much is that speaker? $400? So that's a symbiotic offer. Everything connects to the thing that you already have. So that's what they, that's what they got. Look, and dude said he sells the AirPods. So people hustling. So this is the whole point. What I'm saying is you must create symbiotic offerings. That means you figure out what the main thing is you want to sell. And now ask yourself, all right, based on this, What's something else that people will want that will complement what I'm already doing? So, for example, I'll give you an example, uh, just using myself as an example, offering things that complement what you do. My background, I was playing professional basketball overseas, which is cool. I get paid to play ball overseas, but that doesn't really help anybody but me and the team that I play for. Nobody else is benefiting from that. And since I was on the Internet and I'm seeing these people all the time, I'm like, man, how can I, how can I help these other people out here and create an exchange where I give them something, they give me something, and I could kind of give myself another stream of income? How can I do this? I asked myself this question over 10 years ago. So what did I do? I started making basketball videos and putting them on YouTube. I was putting them on YouTube for free just to help people out. And people started finding me, and I started to have a little bit of an audience, which was fine. They weren't paying me, but it was fine. Then Google bought YouTube, and I started getting a little bit of ad revenue. So now here's the second stream of income. Now I can get ad revenue just from putting videos on the Internet. Nobody else is paying. Only the ad companies pay. Nobody has to pay to watch. I ain't got to pay to put them out. Cool. I could do this. Easy. Then... Somebody said, well, why don't you make some programs so other people could train how you train, right? I said, all right. I start selling programs. Now I give them something. They give me something. That's another stream of income. So now it's symbiotic. You see how all of these are working together. Then people said, well, hey, can you train me one-on-one? I live in Miami. So somebody in Miami said, Dre, I saw that you live in Miami. I live here, here, here. Can you come train me? Sure. This is how much I charge. Now I start training people a little bit. I don't, I'm not a trainer, so please don't ask me to train you. I'm not a trainer. Then people would ask me, well, you know, what about you know, coaching basketball? I never wanted to coach basketball, but if I wanted to, I could become a full-time trainer or a full-time basketball coach. Somebody would give me a job just because of my background and my profile. I could get one if I wanted to. I don't want one, but that could be another street. Then people said to me, somebody said to me, Dre, well, you're making all these programs about playing ball. Why don't you talk about mindset? Because you make these motivational videos all the time. Why don't you make something about mindset? So then I wrote a book called The Mental Handbook, which is all about mental toughness for sports and for life. So that book became another stream. Then I said, sure, I could write another book. So I wrote The Mirror Motivation. That's this is about discipline. Then I wrote a book about confidence. Then I wrote a book about personal initiative. Then I wrote a book where I talked about all of those. And then I wrote 20 other books, literally 20 other books, because that's just the way that I wanted to do it. But you ain't got to write books. You can make programs. You can just make YouTube videos. You can be an influencer. You can do uh, brand activations and influencer campaigns. There's all different ways to get it. But all I'm saying is you need to, first of all, once you figure out what the main thing is that you want to do, the next thing you got to figure out is what can connect to that? What connects to it? Think like Apple did. All right. Use Apple as the Apple's the gold standard. They came out with the phone. Then they then they hit you with what was the next thing they came with? They came with the tablet or first they came with the computer. Right. First, you had the computer. Then they hit you with the phone. Then they hit you with the tablet. Then it was the iPod. Remember the iPod? They got rid of the iPod and they put it in the phone. Then they hit you with the, the watch. Then they hit you with the AirPods. Then they, who knows what they're coming with next. They're going to come out with something next. Next is going to be like contact lenses where everything's just in your eyes. You ain't even got to say nothing. You just blink and the thing comes up. They're going to come up with something next. Then they're going to hit, then they got the wireless charger. And then there's always going to be something extra that there's always going to be a percentage of people who buy it. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into that. It's not just put it out and all of a sudden everybody's just going to come eat it up and pay for it. They had to build a brand. They had to build uh, equity in their company and all of that so that people know that it's worth it. But on a basic level, understand what I'm saying. Symbiotic offerings means make something that complements the thing that you are already doing. You're a basketball player. All right, what can you do that is not going to take you away from basketball, but it'll allow you to... Uh, take advantage of the fact that you play basketball and that people respect that that will allow you to create another stream of income Maybe you can run a summer camp in the off season. 
Maybe you can make uh, basketball T-shirts with your favorite your favorite hoop and slogan and sell it to people. Maybe you can make uh, make your own basketballs and sell it. Maybe you can you know, do training drills and videos and let other players sign up for your membership and they get all your new drills every week when you put new drills out. And there are a lot of there are a million different ways you can do these things. You just need to think: How can I connect this with the next thing? Exactly. Never ending momentum. Perfect uh, analogy. What you said there. So the question you got to ask yourself is this. With what you're doing now, here's the question. What's the next thing they will need? That's the question you got to ask yourself. What's the next thing they need? So, for example, I was playing ball. If somebody wants to play ball, first got to get some skills. So I made basketball training programs. Then you might want to try to get on a team, and you might want to try to get recruited and get a scholarship. I never, wrote, I never made a product about getting a scholarship because I didn't get one, so I don't want to speak from experience that I don't have. But if I had, I probably would have made that. Then I could talk about walking on. Now, I did do that. I can make something about that. Then I talk about or how to get into pro basketball. I got a book about it right here. Here's how you play pro basketball. People play pro ball, they might want to go to a camp. I wrote a book about going to exposure camps. You can pick the right one. Then you might need an agent. Maybe I'll make something for that. Then eventually you're going to stop playing ball. One day you're going to not play basketball anymore. You're going to retire. You're going to need to do something else. And you don't want to be stuck not knowing what to do with your life. I'll probably make something for that. And then I can show people, hey, here's how you take the whole mindset of being an athlete and apply it to anything else. So now I'm not limiting myself to athletes. I can help an entrepreneur, a student, uh, whoever, because I took my framework from sports and I teach you how to use it anywhere. And that opens me up to a whole new audience. But you see how all of these connect to each other. It's not like I'm doing three or four disparate things where I got to go all in these different directions. I'm pulling myself all these different directions. They all connect to each other and they all uh, complement each other. Yeah, you can buy a copy. I'll tell you about that in a moment, about the book. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will tell you about how you can get my products. Don't worry. All right. I know how to create exchange. Yeah. Stay tuned. Point number four. I got two more points here. We're talking how to create multiple streams of income. That third point right there is, the, is a key thing. When you figure out how to create symbiotic offerings, that's when you can explode your business and the possibilities are endless. Point number four, you got to create systems around what you're doing so that you don't work yourself to death. This is an important thing too, especially when you're online. Because all these things that I just told you, all right, putting out, playing ball, putting out videos, making programs, writing books, doing coaching and training, offering consulting, speaking, doing TED Talks, all these programs, all right, this is a lot of work. How the hell are you going to do all of that? <laughs> and your main job is playing basketball. That's hard. All right? Nobody's Superman or Superwoman. You must create systems around this stuff so that these things are getting done without you personally having to do everything on your own. So, for example, when I get the cover, cover design to this book, I don't design the cover of this book. I find somebody who can design the cover. I pay them. I give them something. They give me something. They give me the cover to the book. They design the book. I didn't bound and, and put this book together. I didn't design the inside of it. None of that. All I did was write the words. All right, They put all the rest of it together. You find other people who can do that, but that's a system. You pay them. They pay you, and it helps your system flow, and it works a lot faster. This book looks a lot better and flows a lot smoother than if I had tried to do it myself because I'm not a professional at book binding, but I am a professional at writing books. So I did my part, they did their part, everybody wins, everybody eats. So you gotta create a system. What is your system? You need probably gonna need some people to help you. You can't build a business, a sustainable business that's where you're the only person working, all right? Because there's only so much any one person can do and most people are not good at everything. You understand? Most people are, as somebody said, playing 2K. Most people are not good at everything. Most people are good at three, maybe five things at the most. Your main skills are three to five things total. If you are doing more than five things on a day to day basis, you are doing too much because you're probably not good at them. You're not good at all of them. What am I really good at? I'm really good at doing this, speaking to audiences. I'm really good at coming up with ideas for content and products. I'm really good at creating my products, whether that be a book, a course, a webinar, or something like that. Those are the things that I do best. So most of my day, I want to spend all of my day, if I can, writing and recording and coming up with ideas for what to write and record. Those are the things that I want to do. And I like to work out, but I don't even consider that part of my business anymore because I'm not a professional athlete anymore. But I work out for myself. So I want to create. That's my thing. I am a creator. That's the thing that I do best. So anytime that I'm spending not creating, not doing this, then I'm trying to figure out, all right, how do I create a system to where I don't need to do that anymore so that I can focus more on what I do best? Because when I'm doing what I do best, I'm creating the most value. You understand? 
You create the most value when you do the things that you're good at. When you try to do something that you're not good at, you're not creating the most value. Y'all watched the NBA All-Star game? Y'all saw when Damian Lillard was rapping? <laughs> Is Damian Lillard a good rapper? No. All right, what's Damian Lillard best at? Basketball. All right, know how I know? Because he plays in the NBA. All right, he ain't a rapper. He's an NBA player who likes to rap. Just the way Drake is a rapper who likes to play ball. I don't want to watch Drake play ball. I don't want to watch Damian Lillard rap. And the reason why Damian Lillard shouldn't be rapping because Damian Lillard is Damian Lillard because of, he, because of the way he plays ball. All right, not because of his rhyming skills, if you want to even call him that. So when he started diverting his energy from playing ball to doing this rapping thing, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? I understand you can. You got the money. You're famous. And everybody's going to co-sign you because they like you on the basketball court. No. If you were that good at rapping, you wouldn't be a basketball player. You'd be a rapper. Victor Oladipo. All right, what does Victor Oladipo do for a living? All right, how do you know his name? Basketball. All right, now, you don't know his name from singing. You know his name from playing ball. If Victor Oladipo was that good at singing, guess what? He'd be a singer. He wouldn't be, a, he wouldn't be an NBA player. And this is the way I tell everybody. Shaquille O'Neal, remember when Shaq was rapping? Those of y'all old enough, guess when Shaq started winning championships? When he stopped rapping. I remember Kobe tried to make a rap album. Some of y'all don't remember that. Kobe made a rap album. It was trash. Nobody ever talked about it. And Kobe didn't talk about it. And Kobe stopped rapping. He started playing ball more. And Kobe won championships. Allen Iverson tried to put a rap album out. David Stern said, man, that album trash. Don't put it out. He ain't put it out. He won an MVP the next year. These are all facts. Everything that I just said, all facts. You need to figure out what are the things that you are best at. Focus on that. Create symbiotic offerings. All right? Rapping and playing ball are not symbiotic. All right? I don't care what 2 Chainz said. What 2 Chainz made an album called Rap or Go to the League. 2 Chainz was not going to the league. I've seen 2 Chainz play basketball. You ain't had the option to go to the league, 2 Chainz. There's a reason why you became a rapper and Damian Lillard became a basketball player. All right? Damian Lillard ain't no rapper. Damian Lillard ain't 2 Chainz and 2 Chainz ain't Damian Lillard. Like LeBron could have played in the NFL if he could. Maybe we don't know. He didn't take it. He didn't even play in, in college, so we don't know what he could have did. You got to play three years of college ball to play in the NFL. So I know it sounds good, but he would have to have, have to actually do it, and he didn't do it. So all we could go off of is what he did. I think he made a good decision to play ball. The point is this: uh, we're not talking about other people. The point is this: you need to figure out what are the things that you do best. Focus on those, and anything else that you need to do, you need to create systems around those things that will allow you to not have to do them as much. You might need to do them at first, and at, from time to time you gotta jump in and do things, but you wanna figure out how you don't need to do that at all. Me, I don't wanna be doing graphic design, I don't wanna be handling customer uh, issues, I don't wanna be doing, I don't wanna have to respond to emails or read all my email. I try to pass those things off. I try to put systems in place so that I can focus on what I do best. I already told you what I do best. What I do best is create. If I'm writing one of these, or I'm doing one of these lives, or I'm recording on my mic, on my, my podcast or creating a product or a service or an offering that's going to help people. That's what I do best. That's when I'm in my, they call that your zone of excellence. You need to stay in your zone of excellence. First of all, you need to know what it is. What are you excellent at? Once you know what it is, only do that. And anytime you're doing anything other than that, you need to ask yourself, all right, how can I find a system or hire a person or get some software or something that will keep me from having to ever do this again so I can focus on what I do best? All right, Damian Lillard should ask himself that every time he steps in the rap booth. All right, how, what can I do so I'll never have to rap again? <laughs> so I can just play ball. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Damian Lillard. Point number five. <laughs> the topic here today is creating streams of income. <laughs> how do you create streams of income? Point number five is evolve over time. This is an important thing, especially for athletes. Evolve over time. I told you my background is as a professional basketball player. I stopped playing basketball in 2015. Now, what if all I did was play basketball? What if I just focused on only basketball and I never thought about anything else? Just basketball, basketball, basketball. And then the day I stopped playing ball, I wake up the next morning. Damn, who am I now? Now I'm a nobody. I used to play basketball, but I don't play anymore. My thing used to be that I played ball. That was my main, that was my zone of excellence. But now I said, I don't play anymore. So who am I now? Now I'm a has-been, used-to-be dude that's doing nothing right now. That wouldn't be good. So... While you are focusing on your zone of excellence, take a little bit of your energy, maybe 10% of your focus, and look at what's the next thing. Like I told you about making the symbiotic offerings like Apple does with the AirPods and the watch and all that. You got to ask yourself, what's the next thing people want? I guarantee you at Apple company right now, there's at least 15 people that work at Apple right now working on, they're sitting in the room brainstorming, what's the next thing we can sell to people to complement all the stuff we already sold them? Guaranteed. 
Guaranteed. That's the reason why Apple stays ahead of the curve. And I guarantee you they're reaching out to customers like me and you and having asking questions and sending out surveys and doing focus groups and trying to find out how are we using the phone? How do you use your AirPods? What complaints you got about the watch? How can we make the computer better? And then they're taking those answers and they're brainstorming because these are really smart people. What's the next thing we could create that will really help them out? Oh, they like the earbuds, but they don't like the cords. Why don't we make the earbuds without a cord? AirPods. Oh, people like having a watch, but what about a watch that connects to the phone so they don't even need the phone, they can just use the watch, Apple Watch. This is the, they like the computer, but what, about you, what if you could have a computer with just the screen and no keyboard? Then we get an iPad. So they're always thinking of these things, and you need to do the same thing and evolve over time. So, for example, me, as an athlete, you can't play basketball or football or tennis or baseball forever. Eventually, you're going to be a former that. And look at some athletes who, if you think of who are some athletes y'all know of who played their sport, stopped playing, but then they continued to be successful. Michael Jordan, he got his doc now. He became an owner of a team. Magic Johnson became a, a business entrepreneur. Uh, who's the other guy? A-Rod's like a businessman in baseball. And he does analysis and he also does business. He got a TV show now. Also, I heard uh, Larry Bird was a coach for a little while. Then I don't know what Larry Bird does now. But there are plenty of athletes who leave the sport and then they go got some, They have something else to do. Kobe Bryant, before he passed away, the day after he retired, the story goes, he was in his office making movies and making you know, books for kids and doing things to help women's basketball because he had daughters who played basketball or a daughter who played basketball. So he already had his plan in place. So it doesn't mean that you're not focused. Still focus on your main thing, but ask yourself, what's the next thing? How can I evolve when I'm done with this and move on? If you're an online influencer, Listen, you ain't going to be the hottest influencer forever. Right, you're going to be the hottest one for maybe a couple years, and then eventually a new wave is going to come in, and you ain't going to be the hottest one anymore. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be the old used-to-be influencer, the has-been, who used to be popular, and you're still trying to hold on to that, and you ain't doing nothing new? You ain't got nothing new going on? You always got to think of what's that next thing. So me as an athlete, I understood this from the very beginning of my career. Like, all right, this career ain't going to be forever. If I'm lucky, I'll play till I'm 40. Like, well, Kobe was like 40 when he retired, right? A basketball player. You might get 20 years if you're like amazing. If you're anything less than amazing, it's going to be less than 20 years. Average basketball career is three years. So what's the next thing after that? I had to think about that. All right, so what, what else can I do? What other skills do I have that complement, that I, I can complement my basketball skill with while I'm playing? So, all right, basketball is like two to four hours of work a day. I'm a blog. All right, so I got my blog going. And I play ball. So I could write, I could blog about playing basketball. So I could sharpen my writing game. But at the same time, it's not taken away from my main thing, which is playing ball. So then when I stop playing ball, all right, now I can write some books. You see how those are symbiotic, how they complement each other? And you don't have to do it that way. You could do it another way. If you want to be a, an influencer, you want to be a trainer, you could write down everything you're learning and practice from your coach. And then in the off season, you could train people and make some money on the side doing that. And if you ever decide to stop hooping, you can become a full-time trainer, start your own business. But the point is you need to figure out what is symbiotic and how can you evolve out of the place you're at to the next place, just in case the place you're at or looking at where you're at, the place you're at may eventually not be that place anymore. If you're an athlete, one day you can't play anymore. One day the ball stops bouncing. That's a guarantee. Now, if you're an author, for example, all right, there's no, there ain't really such thing as a hot author. All right, <laughs> there's not like that in the author world. You can write books forever. All right, you could be Stephen King and just write forever. You don't have to worry about this. You might not have the same issue. But based on the industry that you're in and what you're doing, there may be a point that it ends. If you're a rapper, for example, uh, 50 Cent, I just read his book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter, came out a couple weeks ago. He talks about this. He said, look, I understood that when I came out in 2003, I had a certain audience and I was the hottest dude at that point. But by 2015, I wasn't the hottest dude no more. I was, I was like old to these, these new kids that came about. And the stuff that I was talking about, they wasn't trying to hear that anymore. It was a whole new wave. So I had to evolve. And what did he do? 50 went into a TV show. So he took his same skill of creating art, which was music. And now he's like, all right, I'm going to create art for TV. And he said, listen, my audience that was coming to the club in 2003... Those people ain't in the club no more. Now they at home, they got kids, they married, they watch TV. So let me make a TV show so I can still deal with that audience, but just do it in a different way. That's evolution. So you need to think about how do you evolve from where you're at to the next place you go. How can you stay a step ahead of your audience? Again, think about Apple. They're always a step ahead. There are people at Apple right now brainstorming what's the next product they're going to sell you. And I guarantee by the end of this year, you're going to buy it. You don't even know what it is. So let's read, which is how to create streams of Income. Somebody asked me this in the DM today. I told him I'd talk about it. I don't know if he's even in here, but 
He can't say that I didn't address this topic. Point number one, you got to create wealth. What does creating wealth mean? It means knowing what people want. Creating wealth is what people want. The more that you understand what people want, the more you can either create it, identify it, or obtain it. You don't have to even have, it doesn't even have to be yours. The, the restaurant McDonald's, if people know the story of McDonald's, it was created by two brothers named McDonald, but the guy who made it blow up was a dude named Ray Kroc. He bought the company from the McDonald brothers because they didn't know how to build a big business. They wanted to keep it small. Ray Kroc wanted to make it big. He bought the franchise off of them, and then he made it big. So he didn't create it. He wasn't the, the guy with the idea, but he's the guy who saw the idea and said, we can make this bigger. He bought it, and then he made it bigger. So you don't have to be the guy coming up with all the ideas out of nowhere. Uh, you can work at a car dealership. You don't have to build the cars, but if you're good at selling them, you can make money. So figure out how you can create wealth or obtain wealth. And then point number two, exchange. The exchange is the sale. You give them something, they give you something. If you are not creating exchanges, you cannot create income. Figure out how you're going to create income. Figure out how you're going to create exchanges in order to generate revenue. In other words, create income. Point number three, create symbiotic offerings. Definition of symbiotic is interaction between two different organisms in close association. Like Apple, they gave you the laptop, then they gave you the phone, then they gave you the tablet, then they gave you the AirPods, then they gave you the watch. They're always asking, what is the next thing we can sell these people that connects to the thing that they bought already that they're gonna, that's going to keep them in our ecosystem and keep them using our stuff? And Apple is always coming up with new stuff. Like I said, I guarantee you they got 50 people. I said 15, but it's probably 50 people at Apple headquarters right now, and their whole job is figure out what's the next thing we can sell people, and they're going to buy it. So what, do you, what can you create that complements the original thing? I was playing ball. I started making videos, made some ad revenue. Then I made programs, made some revenue off that. Then I could offer coaching, consulting. I started writing books. I started talking about mindset. And with mindset, I realized I could take this and evolve it outside of sports. As there are people who don't play sports who need to learn about mindset. So that allowed me to evolve, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Point number four, you got to create systems around what you're doing so that you're not doing everything yourself. You're only good at three to five things. If you're an NBA player, you're probably not a good rapper. That's the reason why you play in the NBA. If you're a rapper, you're probably not good at playing basketball. That's the reason why you're a rapper and you're not in the NBA. Figure out what are the things that you are good at. Focus on them, your zone of excellence, and get the most you can. Squeeze all the juice out of that orange and don't try to do more than one thing that you need, that you need to be doing. Create systems around what you do. And point number five, you must evolve over time. This is what I was talking about with playing ball. I was talking about... Um, working on your game and dribbling drills and shooting. But somebody said, Drake, why don't you talk about mindset since you make these weekly motivation videos? I said, cool. I started making some mindset stuff. I made a mindset book. And when I made the mindset book, people start coming to me and saying, Drake, yo, I don't even play ball, but I like the stuff you say about mindset. This applies to life, not just business. And that planted a seed in my mind. So I knew the day that I stopped hooping, I could talk about mindset to people who don't even play ball. And I ain't got to come in the room like, yeah, I'm a ball player just to get respected. I could say, yo, I used to play ball, but what I do now I talk about this mindset thing and there's value in that because there are people outside of the, outside of my realm who need it. I had wealth that wasn't just limited to the basketball world. It could go to the outside world. You understand how all of this works? All that being said, now I'm going to tell you about these two books I got in front of me. Then I'm going to answer all questions. So if you got a question, go ahead and post it in the comment section. We got like 10 minutes for me to address everything. This book right here. Is already paid for. The book is free. All you do is take care of the shipping. It is called The Mirror of Motivation. It is a self-guide to self-discipline. I wrote this book so that you can light that fire inside of yourself. Find that spark within you that already exists. Find your inner wealth like I talked about here today. And you can separate yourself from everybody else out here in the world who is drifting around with no purpose, no direction, no goals, don't know what they're going, don't know where they're, what they're doing. You don't want to be that person. Get this book by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is paid for. I already paid for it. You take care of the shipping. I'll take care of the book. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Get this while supplies last. And while you're there, you will get an offer to get all four books in a bulletproof bundle. That This is the book on discipline. I got one on mental toughness called the Mental Handbook. One on confidence called the Super You. One on personal initiative called 100 Mental Game Best Practices. You can get all four. It's called the bulletproof bundle. You can check the little box when you order this and you can get it. But that's up to you. This book right here is called the Overseas Basketball Blueprint. This is the book that I wrote for anyone who wants to play professional basketball overseas. Even if you come from a small school, even if you have an undecorated background, even if you've always been counted out and overlooked, if you feel like you're about to waste your time, if you feel like your opportunities are passing you by and you want to stop that, go to balloverseas.com so you can get your opportunity to play professional basketball overseas. I promise you, I'm an entrepreneur full time. Playing basketball was a better job than being an entrepreneur simply because it is much less work.
All right. Playing basketball overseas is the best job you can have in the world. You get to travel the world. You get your travels paid for. Your flights are paid for. Your housing is paid for. Your food is paid for. All you got to do is show up to the gym and play basketball for two to three hours a day. If there's a better job than that, somebody tell me what job anybody in here has is better than this. You can't. There is no job in the world better than being a professional basketball player. Go to balloversees.com and you can get that book. So anybody who is checking in just now, I just went through everything, the five points on how to create streams of income in your life. If you have a question, go ahead and post it in the comment section. We got like seven minutes to answer all questions. So go ahead and post your questions right now. Keep them short. Make sure it's good. A Greenia says, do I watch MMA? No, I do not. But shout out to the MMA fighters out there. Shout out to Curtis, Indiana. Special Olympian said, you like basketball a lot? Good. Shout out to everybody who likes basketball. D. Lou, appreciate you. Josh Flag 22, what's going on? Special Olympian, all right, I told you how to get the books, right? All right, mirrorofmotivation.com and balgoverseas.com if you want to play basketball overseas. Uh, if you want to get this one, this is workonyourgamebook.com. Workonyourgamebook.com. I got a lot of books. Don't worry, you don't have to remember all those. Just get one of them. And then once you start getting my emails, you'll learn about the rest of them. Trust me. All right, we don't miss. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got. Trainer TG was good. Fitz Grits. So he's selling those AirPods. <laughs> Made by Tev. Special Olympian says, can I play basketball with you? I don't play basketball no more. So I don't play basketball with nobody. But I'm sure you can find a game somewhere. Just go to your local court. There'll be somebody out there. Uh... Special Olympics say you never talked about playing 2K. Yeah, I don't play 2K. But that is something that some people do. d Lou said, yeah, master your top three. Yes, master things. There is, a, there is a value in knowing a whole lot of different things. There is value in that in some areas of life. But when it comes to mastering your main offering, that's not the thing you want to be. You want to focus on something because the more focused you are, the easier it is for people to understand what you're about. And the easier it is for them to make a decision about uh, buying from you or, excuse me, watching you or listening to you if they know exactly what you're talking about. If I say I'm going to do a live stream on playing basketball overseas, everybody knows exactly what that is. All right, there's no confusion as to, as to the topic. Now, if I say I'm going to talk about playing ball overseas and motivation and confidence and building a business online and writing books, you're like, all right, what exactly is this guy talking about? You don't really know. So there's a benefit to being a jack of all trades in some areas, but, and there are a detriments to it in other areas. So you just got to know when to use each. d Lou said he's not bad. Well, I heard him rapping at the All-Star game. He was bad. It was, very, it was not very good. The only reason he rapped, because he's a famous basketball player, not because he's good, in my opinion. But music is art, so everybody can have their own opinion. Fitz says, he actually bad, though? Yeah, I listened to him rapping, and he was bad. I watched a couple of his videos, and I thought they was whack. I think people accept it because of who he is, not because it's actually good. <laughs> Again, that's just my opinion, though. But music is art, like I said. So everybody can have their own opinion. Boondock said, you look like King Botch. I don't think so. I've seen that guy. I don't think we look alike. d Lou said, Herbie Hancock moved with the times in his sound. All right, I don't know about Herbie Hancock. I know who he is, but I'll take your word for that. Andy91282 was good. D. Martin says, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. I got a lot of experience doing this, but I get better every day. That's why I keep doing it. Money May asked about buying stocks. I think you asked me that question like last week. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to tell you about these books one more time. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Self-guide to self-discipline. The book is already paid for. The book is free. You take care of the shipping. I'm shipping it worldwide. Balloverseas.com, the overseas basketball blueprint for anybody who wants to play professional basketball overseas. This is a 237-page book for anybody who wants to play ball overseas. And if you're looking to play ball overseas, trust me, I got so much, I got so much on the way for players who want to play ball overseas. Y'all not even gonna believe it when it comes out. Actually, maybe you will believe it. If you know who I am, you'll believe it. But I got a lot coming, so stay tuned, stay close to the money. Everybody, I'm doing these lives every single day, 5:15 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, I got an event, a virtual event. So I am not doing a live tomorrow, but I will be back Thursday. So it won't be a live Wednesday. The next live will be Thursday, 5.15 p.m. Eastern, every other day besides that. I might do a live in the morning. Maybe I'll do a live anyway. It might be a shorter one tomorrow evening. But stay tuned. I'll post it in my story, but it's probably not going to be like this tomorrow because I got a virtual event that I got to be at. So everybody, have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. We will be back 
Stay tuned to my story tomorrow. You'll know what's going on. I'll tell y'all what's up. Get these free books while they are available and work on your game. Dre all day. We out of here.